what makes Brian Hartline so good? He's the guy that made so much money in the NFL. You probably just could have kicked his feet up and just relaxed for the rest of his life, and here he is working his butt off. Just kind of what makes him so good. Well, I think uh, you know Brian obviously did a great job of playing in the NFL, but I think he, he wants to have a career moving forward. You know, he's a long, uh, he's a young guy, so he's got a long life ahead of him, and uh, you know, he and Kara started a family, and, and they love Columbus, and. Uh, you know, he's really embraced this role. He kind of got thrown into it, uh, but, he's, but he's putting his heart and soul in it and doing a good job building relationships with his players and, and growing every day as a coach uh, because it's different when you go from a player to a coach, uh, but he's, he's off to a great start. Bill, you had seven straight blowouts. Is there a part of you that is looking forward to having this kind of game where it really should be a fourth, fourth quarter game and you really will be tested by how good you are? Well, we prepare every week to play 60 minutes, but – uh, we know it's going to be like that this week, and so we're preparing. We knew it was going to be like this, and um, you know, certainly when you play Wisconsin, you got to got to be ready to play 60 minutes, uh, field position game, understand what that means, and uh, it's going to be tough at times, but we know that we got to work through it. All right next door, Tim. Yeah, uh, Brian. Everybody's making a big deal about Wisconsin's running game, Wisconsin's offensive line, et cetera. Do you sense? How do you sense a chip on the shoulder factor is for your offensive line and your running back in this? Is this a kind of a Step up, prove me kind of game. Well, I mean, I think um, you know, Coach Mick said it the other day. Is that you know, when you uh, you know, at any time you go into a game, you know, you have a one-on-one -on -one battle that you have to win. And so, I think you know, our guys are uh, looking hard at that. You know, and, and this is you know, by far the biggest challenge we've had, both sides of the ball. Uh, bet one of the better offenses and best defenses in the country that we've seen. And so, yeah, we're being challenged in all areas. And and I think anytime you know, it's the same thing with coaches. You know, we're, we're being challenged. And so when you wake up every morning, I mean, it, it, the competitor in you tells you, you know, you got to work and do a better job than they do. Awesome. Front row, Austin. Right, I know it's just one play from last week, but you had, it was like third and eight in the first quarter and gave it to J.K. What gives a, a coach or play caller the faith that you can move the chains just handing it off and running in that situation? Well, I mean, those are decisions that are made early in the week. And, uh, you know, there's certain times where, you know, you, you get looks that you like or sometimes you just make the decision you're going to call it at that time. Um, and, and you have to live with, with the consequences. You know, if you get stuffed on a third down, you can get second guessed on why you're running on third down. But uh, when you hit it, it, it works. And uh, I think any time you can run the ball on third down, you can calm down a little bit what they're doing in terms of their schematics and different exotic, uh, you know, blitzes that maybe aren't great against the run. So, uh, you know, we've done that a decent amount. We like to do that, you know, to keep guys off, off uh, balance. But, uh, but it's calculated risk. I know the plan to win, but I assume winning up front is every is kind of the gospel every week. But if you don't win up front, you have no shot in this game, correct? I mean, if you yeah, any game, but certainly certainly this week. Uh, front row, Doug. Uh, you were asked about your third down success the other day. The idea of and you mentioned making sure you don't get in too many third longs that helps with third down success. You always talk about staying off schedule. Just that part of it, and I didn't look up the numbers yet. I don't know. Have. have you done a good job staying out of third and long and giving yourself chances to convert? Have you been pleased with that part of it, or this still happens sometimes? Uh, we, we've been uh, spotty. I, I think um, there's been times we've got ourselves in the third and long situation that we can do a much better job of. Um, other times when we get ourselves into a rhythm that we're a little bit more uh, on schedule and, and third manageable is something that uh, we've been decent at so far this year. Um, but I think it's important. I, I think it's important on both, both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, the more third longs that we can stay out of or force them into, I think, the advantage for us. Next door, Nathan. Uh, being a head coach this year, what have you um, gained from maybe being more involved with the defense? Maybe are there different personalities on that side of the ball? And are you just learning more about football with more interaction with that side of the ball? Uh, no, I, I don't think it's, it's more X to O's. I think, if, if anything, being a head coach, you learn more about just people, motivating people, managing people, uh, how that works. Uh, you know, creating a vision and then uh, you know setting the standard to make sure everybody lives up to that to that standard and then, and then kind of leading them towards that vision. You know, that's that's more than the football actually is less than it was. You know, when you're an assistant coach, you're really uh, into the X's and O's, which I, I you know still on a day to day basis am, but it's more of the other stuff. Second row, Dan. Ryan, you said on the radio show that the weather is anything you can control, but are there things that you adjust in your game plan? during the week when you know there could be a chance for rain on Saturday? Not really. Um, you know, we have to you know, make adjustments as individuals, guys who carry the ball. Uh, but other than that, you know, we, we, 
we're still gonna have the same game plan regardless of the weather, um, unless it's just completely brutal, you know, which there's, there's different levels of rain too. I mean, there's kind of where it's out there training, but then there's also the stuff that's sideways, like in that Illinois game a couple years ago, it was hard to even take a snap. So uh, in those situations, you gotta be a little more conservative, but uh, but if, you know, if it's just raining out, then we, we have our full arsenal. Um, I've been going through some of my notes and some of your players were discussing how you were talking about the Nebraska game in January, and last week you mentioned discussing the Northwestern game in February. Have you been going line by line through your schedule over the course of the winter? Is that how you did that? Well, we, we, at the beginning of the season, we looked at the schedule and we said, all right, here, here's the schedule. And, uh, you know, as you look at it, it's, it's a long 12 games, and you understand what it takes. Uh, but when you, when you start to look at it one game at a time, you know, and, and you just – that's the way you look at it. If you cross out everything else, you don't look what's happened in the past. You don't look what's in the forward. You just look at that team and you stay focused. I think that gives our guys a good visual of just to stay locked in on this game. Don't worry about what's coming in the future. Don't worry about what's going on in the past. Let's do a great job right now and do a good job with this practice, do a good job with this day, and then everything else will take care of itself and we pick our heads up in, in January. And to clarify, by the beginning of the season, you mean January? Uh, yeah, I mean, we talked about it in the spring, different uh, team meetings. I forget exactly when, but sure, yeah. And then and then the preseason as well. Front row, Joey. You talked about this, I think, earlier this week as well, but how would you kind of assess Justin's ability to force snap and kind of sliding the line, like pre protection? Like, how is he up to speed in that regard? Good. I think he and Josh are doing a good job. I mean, it's the second year in a row now we've had to take, um, you know, pretty sophisticated offense and have a new center, a new quarterback. You know, last year it was Michael Jordan and Dwayne. This year it's Josh and Justin. And, uh, and they're both getting better at it every week. Fourth row back, Patrick. Ryan, when you're playing a team like Wisconsin that's as run heavy but also has receiving options, how cognizant do you have to be of the play action? And yeah, that's huge. Not yeah, that's, that's huge on first, second down. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's where guys got to be disciplined with their keys, get their eyes in the right place. Um, and, and then third down is more of a drop back. But, uh, but, but they, they have a good arsenal of stuff they do as well. Uh, you know, Coach Chris does a good job in, in terms of mixing it up. and. But, but certainly, you know, when you have heavy, heavy run tendencies that play action, you, know, you become susceptible to that. And looking at Wisconsin, just watching them, it seems like they throw more on first down than they have in the past. Have you guys noticed that they're doing some of that earlier than maybe they would? It, you know, they change it up. And it's like anything else. When you look at your self-scout, you, know, you try to figure out what your tendencies are, and then you, then you break them. You know, and so I think that's kind of what they're trying to do there. And uh, that's, a, that's usually a week-to-week -week thing. Stay in Sam Rowe there. Um, what was it about Justin that made you know that you needed him right when he entered the portal? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if, if, if that was the case or not. You know, I, I think that once he entered the portal, uh, had great conversations and, um, you know, kind of figure out what his thoughts were. And, and then it kind of grew from there. And then it all worked out. And, um, and to see him, you know, come here in a short period of time and assimilate himself to the team and uh, teams taking him in has been great to see. Him. Last question, Bruce. Uh, with Chase Young. I just wonder how many different modes of dealing with him you've seen from the opponent this season. And there's this school of thought that if you have a great pass rusher, you run at him. This would be a team that would have the capacity to do that. Have teams tried to do that? Or can you speak to the fact that you know Chase's abilities extend beyond his ability to just get to the passer? Yeah, I think that's what makes him special is that he's very versatile in what he can do. He plays the run. He plays the pass. He can beat you with speed. He can beat you with power. He's very versatile that way. And, uh, I think some people say go right at guys like that. that that's a theory, you know, and I think it, it sounds good, but um, you still have to block them. And, um, but, but I think uh, they'll certainly have a good plan for, for handling Chase, and Chase is going to do a good job of uh, you know, adapting as, as the game goes on, but then the guys around him are going to help him out too. Have you seen a variation in how teams have tried to deal with him? Uh, yeah, I think you know, everybody has a little bit of an idea, but they don't want to go overboard either. So um, you know, we'll kind of see what Wisconsin's plan is. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Ryan.